Hello and welcome to BusyWorksBeats.com. This is module one, integer notation. In this module, you're gonna learn how to create chords using numbers. And once you learn this, this will literally open your eyes to what you've been missing. This will literally reveal the secret, the wall between good producers and great producers. This module will literally teach you music theory in itself. Now there's more parts to it later in the different modules, but it, this is the most powerful section and that's why we put it first in module one. So just to go through, th go, oh, I got tongue twisted. Just to go through some nomenclature here, some common names that you're gonna hear a lot. And basically the point of this is to teach you how to recognize different um, you know, names and notation if you ever happen to go to a website and read off their music theory notation. So when we use major chords, just know that we, the way we write it is we use the letter of the key. So we can use A, B, C, D, E, F, or G, and just a capital letter just means major. And I'm talking about reading chords. So when you're looking for chords online and you just see C, that means it's C major by default. Now, when you read C with a little M next to it, it's referring to a minor chord. So you're going to see A with a little M, that's A minor. You're going to see D with a little M, that's D minor. You're going to see C minor. You're going to see all the notes in minor. And basically, it's just a little M next to the note. So that's the difference when you're reading a major chord from a minor chord. Okay, major chords do not use any notation. It's just assumed to be major. And we have to identify minor chords by putting a little M next to them. Now there's a lusher chord or a bigger chord called a major seven chord. It basically adds a note to the major uh, chord. And we're gonna get into what chords are. Chords are essentially, they start out as triads or three different notes put together to create a harmonic sound. And we call that a chord. So just three notes put together as a chord. Two or more technically, but three is the general triad. And that's what major and minor are. There's only three notes in a major and minor chord. Whereas a major seven and a minor seven has actually four notes in it. And that's why it sounds bigger and more lush. So major seven, instead of leaving C by itself with no notation and using a seven, meaning major seven, we're gonna use C and then we spell out with a capital letter M A J seven. You'll understand this when you start to read the sites and uh, different websites. So when you want to, when you read a major seven chord, you're going to see C major seven. Now the upgrades from a minor is a minor seven chord. The notation is simply C little M and a seven. So we know these are seven chords. But notice how the major, you have to spell out mage this time instead of using just the C. Now, if you read diminished chords, and we'll get into what diminished means later, you're going to see C dim for diminished or C with a degree next to it. And when you see augmented, you're going to see C aug. And when you see a, what's called a dominant seventh chord, which we'll get into, you'll see C7. Now, notice how this isn't C major seven you have to have mage in between to show that it's a major seven or else it's going to mean dominant seventh, which is a different chord. So just to go over some common vocabulary you're going to hear um, in this course and in life, you're going to hear an interval. So what does an interval mean? An interval just means a note. Every key is right, technically an interval. Um, when we go from one note to another note, we're going up or down one interval. So if we go from a white key to a black key, that's one interval. If we're going from, you know, the note to the next note, it could be white or black, doesn't really matter, because certain notes 
are white notes that stick next to each other like B and C and E and F. You don't have to memorize the notes. I'm just giving you examples. So a note to the next note is an interval. It's a counting system. Now the interval also has a synonymous name, a semitone. So you might hear people use semitone or interval interchangeably. And I'll try and get you used to the vocabulary throughout the course. But it's essentially the same as an interval. Semitone means up or down one note. That's all it means. Now a whole tone consists of two intervals. So when we get into scales, we're going to be using that vocabulary, whole tone. It just means go up two or down two intervals, two keys. Now a half tone is the same as a semitone. So we have three different words that mean the same thing. <laughs> so we have an interval, a semitone, and a half tone. And they all mean the same thing, just going up or down a key. Now I may use this a lot and I may not throughout the course, but you're going to hear this somewhere, voicing. It's basically how you play a chord, and we're going to get into that later in the course. An octave, remember there's seven letters for each uh, octave, or you know, seven keys for each octave, A through G. And when we go up and down our keyboard, we're actually going up and down octaves. So each section of A through G is one octave. And when I say we're going to go up an octave, I mean we're going to go from one set of A through G to the next set of A through G, either higher or lower. Some more co um, common vocabulary you're going to hear, which I have mentioned in the overview, are accidentals. So accidentals just mean sharps and flats. That's all it means. Um, you know, in classical music theory, it's a lot harder to understand, but literally it just means flats and sharps. So if a note is sharp, again, we move the note up one interval. So here's F on the keyboard, this white key. When we move one interval up, it's F sharp. Now, if a note is flat, we're going to move down one interval. So in this case, if we use the same key F and we go down one interval, this is a white key to white key situation. So technically, F flat is equal to the key E. So they're interchangeable. You can mean F flat or you can mean E. Generally, people say E because, I mean, that's just how they say it. But that's what flat and sharp mean, and that's how you can visually see what they actually mean. So the same key, F, F sharp is just one up, one interval or semitone or half tone up. And F flat is one semitone interval or half tone down. So how we play chords. I remember when I took a um, music, my first music theory course in uh, university, and my professor was playing with both hands. Now, from what I understood as a mediocre, you know, piano en enthusiast, which means I didn't know how to play piano that well um, at the time. Essentially, I didn't understand why you needed two hands. I always knew the triad, the three note separation, but I never knew why people played with two hands. And essentially, the secret behind it is the left hand controls what's called bass notes. And we need the bass notes to make the chord sound a lot more fierce and alive. And the right hand controls the chord and we're going to show you different hand techniques to make those really powerful. So that's why we're using our left and our right hand. We're not playing two chords with two hands. You can only play one chord at a time. So some additional notations. When we use a different bass note, just like I said with the left hand, the bass note, we're going to you're going to see notation like this, F slash AM. Now, if we go back to our, you know, our knowledge of the names, AM means A minor. So we know that's an A minor chord, and you're going to learn how to make the A minor chord very simply. But just a quick um, cheat sheet, I guess. The A minor chord is A, C, E on the keyboard. 
So what does it mean to have F slash A minor? So we know we're playing A minor with our right hand. If we go back, remember, the right hand controls the chord and the left hand controls the bass notes. So in this kind of notation, whenever you see a slash, it means that the left hand is going to play F as the bass note and the right hand is going to play A minor as the top chord and that's why it's written this way left hand on F right hand on A minor now once you understand that you're going to be able to change up your chords tremendously and you're going to be making cool cool progressions trust me you don't always have to use A minor I mean excuse me A as your bass note generally when you're producing chords like I said, A minor is A, C, and E. The way we determine what we play with our left hand usually starts with the first letter or the first key from our right hand. So if we're playing A minor, we're going to play A in the bass. And that's what we that's how we decide. We match this this key with this key, just lowered one octave or even two octaves. So we're using the A up here and we're using an A down here, generally, when you play A minor. Now if we play F slash A minor, we're instead of using the A in our bass note, we're actually going to change that A to an F. Again, left hand on F, right hand on A minor. So don't worry about the names of the chords yet. I just want to show you that you can play the same top chord, A minor, but you can change the bass notes and you're going to see this notation in a lot of websites. Don't let names confuse you. Everything is literally based on numbers. And people have always said this, but this course will literally crack that code that separates, you know, novices from mediocre or novices from intermediate and advanced players. So what is a chord? The definition of a chord is two or more notes that harmonize. And a common term you're going to hear is a triad. All that means is three notes that make a chord. And a chord is anything that harmonizes, right? So it's like having three different singers sing a different note and they make a chord. So chords harmonize. The main function is actually to create mood and chords create guidance. And we have to understand chords and chord progressions so that we can give our song guidance. And I said before, without the chords in the process of producing, you don't have any foundation for the melody or the bass. So it's a really, it's a really hard task to make a melody and a bass line without the chords. Now there's a way to do it, but chords are the fundamental thing we have to understand first to even get into melody and bass. So how do we apply this integer notation? Integer notation just means number notation. That's all it means. So basically, we're going to start with any point on the keyboard. This is the magic of this whole course. You can do this blindly. You don't need any keyboards that have letters on them. You don't need anything that tells you anything. You just need to make sure your instrument is in tune. And this is how you start. You pick any point on your keyboard you call that point zero. So we start, we always start with zero. Okay. You pick literally any point on your keyboard to do this exercise. All right. So that's the zero point. What energy notation is going to tell us is that we can use zero, three, seven to build a chord. And I'm going to show you the secret codes for each chord. And you're going to understand this a lot easier. But a quick overview of this technique is we start with zero. So let's say we start with our right thumb on A. So that's the zero point is A. We're going to count every key up from A to create a chord. We're starting at A and we're going to count every interval, interval, semitone or key, any kind of term you want to use. We're just going to count up keys. So we're going to start at zero. One would be A sharp. 2 would be the next key, B, 3, and that's where we're going to stop, and that should be C on your keyboard. So the formula for a minor chord is 0, 3, 7. So I'm going to show you different codes to build different chords. 
So 0, 3, 7, we're gonna start with the zero point A, and then we're just gonna count. One, two, three. Our middle finger should be on C, our thumb should be on A, and then we're gonna keep counting. Four, five, six, seven. And that's gonna be E. And we're gonna put our pinky on E. So our middle finger is our thumb is on A, our middle finger is on C, and our pinky is on E. That makes A minor. It's literally this easy. You can pick a random point on your keyboard and create a minor chord. You don't have to memorize anything. You could just do it off the top of your head. All you need to know are the numbers. So integer notation. Um, it's a formula sequence to each chord like this. Major chords are 0, 4, 7. Minor chords are 0, 3, 7, just like we did in the last exercise. So we can literally pick a key on our keyboard and say this is the zero point, and then we count up 1, 2, 3, 4. That's our next key, 5, 6, 7. That's the last key of the major triad, and that makes a major chord. You could do the same thing with minor. Now notice, we're gonna get into this later, how minor is only one number from a major chord. And when we get into shapes, we're gonna show you how to change major chords into minor chords. But essentially, the middle number is different. 0, 4, 7, 0, 3, 7. Instead of counting four steps, or four intervals, we're only gonna count three. So essentially, we can take a major chord down to a minor chord by lowering the middle note from the major chord down one, and that's the minor chord. Simple as that. Now major seven has a code of zero, four, seven, eleven. Now if we use that same counting system, we're gonna pull up the pointer here. Let's say we start at A, zero, four, seven, eleven. So don't mind the numbers here. Actually, let's do this with uh, minor seven. So zero three seven ten is the minor seventh formula, and you're really going to understand these if you see the commonality between a major and a major seven. Again, we're adding a note to the major to create a major seven. That's going to be the eleven, and we're adding a note to the ma the minor to create a minor seventh, which is the ten. Now, if you look at the similarities. We have 0, 4, 7, we have 0, 4, 7, then we have 11. We have 0, 3, 7, and we have 0, 3, 7, and then 10. Now notice how every other number in the major, as we build bigger chords, it goes down one. So 4 goes to 3, 11 goes to 10. And it's going to be very easy to change a major 7th to a minor 7th, simply by choosing every other key and lowering it down one. So we're gonna get into all that later in the course, but let's create a minor seventh chord starting from the zero point A. We already have A minor laid out for us, but let's start over. We have zero at A, one, two, three is C, four, five, six, seven is E, eight, nine, ten. All right, so what key is this? Again, if we're counting A, B, C, D, E, F, G, G would be the 10th the 10 in this case. So it'd be 0, 3, 7, 10 on that G. So it'd be A, C, E, G to make a minor seventh chord. It's really this simple. Once you know the codes, you can pick a point, and I say this a billion times because you could do this on a guitar, you could do this on a piano, you could do this on your favorite instrument. Pick a point, that's the zero point. We go zero, count up the keys, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and then we have chords so how do you apply this again we did this um, exercise so again 037 makes a minor chord which is the G so here's some more um, chord names that might trip you up now but once you understand how we're gonna get them with shapes, you're gonna really understand what these mean. So there are three other chords we can use, use called diminished, augmented, and dominant seven. If you remember, those were the bottom three in the list of the chord list. So what this means is we can take 
if you remember the minor code 037 all we're going to do is take that 7 and lower down one to create a diminished now this won't mean anything if you don't understand what diminished and augmented actually means in shape form you're going to understand what it means when we get into chord progressions and uh, shape form but for now just know that this is the code <clears throat> augmented is 048 so we're taking that major code 047 and we're raising the 7 up one and we call that augmented dominant 7 is 04710 so we have 047 which is the major chord and then we have 10 from that minor 7th chord so we're lowering down our major 7th we're lowering that last number down and that's what a dominant 7 is now you, those won't make sense until you get into the application which is in chord progressions generally you don't use these chords you know willy-nilly to make good chord progressions you generally start with minor or major and you work your way through until you have to add what's called tension and tension comes from these type of chords so you won't understand this until we get to that point so question one here's a quick flash quiz to help you understand the integer notation so I'm going to go back as a quick review just to give you a little cheat sheet here and I think I skipped it actually so here we here's the list okay remember major is 0 4 7 minor is 0 3 7 major 7th is 0 4 7 11 and minor 7th is 0 3 7 10 and remember that all we're doing is lowering every other number down one from the major stuff and that's the minor stuff so every other number that we fill in gets lowered one to fit the minor all right now let's get on to the quick flash quiz now here's the also the cheat sheet 036 is diminished again you won't understand this till the application period augmented 048 dominant 04710 so question one what does 047 mean and I'll give you a couple seconds to formulate an answer zero four seven means the major chord and you will understand the difference between major and minor in module two chords by shape but remember it all we're doing is lowering the middle number down one or lowering every other number down one to make minor so this is a key formula zero four seven major question two zero three seven zero three seven represents the minor chord notice how minor lowers that middle integer by one interval four changes to three and you will understand the finger positioning even better trust me question three zero three seven ten zero three seven ten represents the minor seventh chord remember we're using the core base of minor zero three seven and then we're adding a note the ten and where we get that ten from is the major we're just lowering that eleven down to ten so all you really have to remember to create minor and major stuff is to remember the major formula zero four seven eleven everything kind of correlates from there so you you're going to want to review this module and after reviewing this module one more time you can then watch module one video two thanks for watching today it's busyworksbeats.com